previously in Starman. The Knight family suffered multiple losses in one day, as the new Starman David Knight was murdered. Ted Knight's home was destroyed and he was injured, and Jack Knight's business was destroyed and he was shot. The mastermind of this plan was revealed to be Ted's former nemesis, The Mist. Welcome back to the Starman Supper Club. My name is Jared. The goal of this show is to review every issue of the 1994 DC Comics series, Starman. Today, we'll be discussing Starman number one, written by James Robinson, pencils by Tony Harris, inks by Wayne Von Grobedger, and this issue was released September 20th, 1994. From the Shades Journal, Opal City has been the same old, same old for how long? A decade? Two, perhaps? Truly, it all begins to blur after a while. The only change of late has been a new Starman, bumbling, fumbling, trying to find his feet, and failing. A bullet in the chest made sure of that. Indeed, if the news reports are to be believed, the same old, same old of Opal City is dead and gone along with him. The city is under siege. Crime is now everywhere. Overnight, this is it. Sudden. Rampant. The police appear powerless, unable to cope with the sheer multitude of offenses. The issue opens with an introduction to one of many supporting cast members, The Shade. The Shade is writing in his journal, as I just read, as he watches a newscast and the news of Opal under siege. The city is on fire and crime is running rampant. Shade is a longtime nemesis of the original Flash, Jay Garrick. Shade made his first appearance in Flash number 33 in September of 1943. And this issue of Starman is established that Opal City is the Shade's home. We catch up with Jack Knight as he's made his way to the hospital to find his dad. Ted is still dealing with the death of David and scolds Jack for losing the cosmic belt and for the words he used when they were last together. He informs Jack that he is a coward and wants him to leave. The scene is rather harsh. During and after Ted's scolding of Jack, we are introduced to two members of the supporting cast. The O'Dares, all members of the Opal City Police Department, are in Ted's hospital room. We get a brief glimpse of three of the brothers, but no information on them yet. Jack meets the O'Dare sister, Hope. Hope has a conversation with Jack about the history between her father and Jack's. The O'Dare family has promised to always be there for Starman, but Jack wants to hear nothing about that. As Hope starts to rip Jack a new one, they are summoned back into Ted's room. Ted has just received a phone call. As Opal City burns in the background, The Mist is on the phone bragging to Ted about how the once peaceful city is now burning and how he took both of his sons from him. He then claims that the next thing he plans to destroy is Ted's dead wife's memory. Ted tells Jack that there is nothing The Mist can do to his dead wife as she's been cremated and her ashes have been spread. He then informs Jack that he needs to leave town and wait until this is over. Jack actually listens to his father briefly until he learns that the wing named after his mother at the Opal County Museum is under attack. It was her dying request to the city. Jack tries for a minute to talk himself out of it, but as the page turns, we see that he is taken to the skies, gravity rod in hand, to fight back against the men destroying the museum. A crowd watching below sees this and people begin to think that David Knight is indeed alive. But from the shadows, the Shade sees this and realizes that this is not David, but Jack. Jack does his best to fight the thugs and is holding his own until Kyle shows back up for round two. Armed with a machine gun and the cosmic belt, Kyle easily incapacitates Jack as Jack crashes into a body of water and is not seen again, losing the gravity rod in the process. A quick scene change brings us back to the museum, where the Shade encounters two thieves trying to steal a piece of art. We see how truly powerful the Shade is as he takes out one would-be thief and ponders if he should take some art for himself, a finder's fee, if you will. He finds something on the ground and thinks to himself about how great it would be for the city if Jack were alive. Jack is seen pulling himself out of the water, declaring that even though he shouldn't, he isn't going to leave town. Quote, I'm not a hero. This showed it. I don't think like one. I don't fully even try what I did. Lost the gravity rod. Yeah. And lucky I didn't lose my head along with it. Dad. 
wanted me to leave town. Fine. Just don't think I'd be doing that by way of water. In the light of day, I'll see he was right. I can't help the opal. Never could. I'm no sterling soul. It's better to be safe. Alive. In the light of day, I'll see that it's... Oh, hell. It's a long time until day. And it's light. I'm going back. This issue gets a 9 out of 10 from me, just like the last. The art team is still finding its feet, and this issue ends almost exactly the same way as the last. But it does establish that Jack has a never-say-die attitude, and it's making him the reluctant hero we will all grow to love. It also starts to lay the groundwork of the supporting cast, which is huge for this book. The O'Dares and Shade could easily carry a book themselves, and there are many adventures to come. Now, let's get a preview of the next issue, which is your homework. Starman number two, written by Robinson, art by Harris, and Von Grobedger. The Mist meets with fellow Starman villain The Shade to form a plan of attack on Opal City, while new Starman Jack Knight assembles a costume to face the Mist's daughter. But before diving into battle, Jack detours to a fortune teller for a quick glimpse at a possible outcome for the battle. A huge issue. And that'll do it for this episode of the Starman Supper Club. Keep listening and keep reading, and I'll see you next time.